Hello. In this video, we're going to discuss how the user can administer the Spire and Test Center chassis, um, including firmware, equipment information, rebooting uh, the system, modules or port groups, and basic license management. Okay, so the first step is uh, you can uh, connect to the Spire and Test Center chassis using the, the main GUI. Um, to change the IP address and IP information on the chassis, go ahead and just telnet to the chassis and use the login name admin and the password spt underscore admin all lowercase and this will get you to the main menu of the Spire and Test Center chassis. So from here you can type help and this will give you a list of all of the commands. So to see what version is currently on the chassis you can type version To set the IP address, you can use the IP address command. That will set the IP address when you press enter. To set the net mask, use the net mask command. And to set the default gateway, GW address, and then the default gateway. Now, after you set this, you then use the activate command. The activate command will then apply the changes live uh, without setting. Um, and in addition, if you wanted to, you could use the ping command and uh, ping an address from the Spire and Test and Chassis to make sure, for example, that the default gateway is actually applying. Um, and it is also recommended that before you actually set the IP address, you ping the address um, that you want to set the chassis to to make sure that you don't have a conflicting IP address on your network. So once you uh, finish with the activate command, you can just exit the telnet session. And once the chassis uh, comes back up, then you can come over and you can go down to license management. And what this will do is this will show you what licenses are currently available. So I can add a license using the install command. And when I do this, I'm going to point to a .lic file. And this is the file that you, you generated uh, using the, the LAC certificate, going to the support.spirantcon.com website and fulfilling the license. So when you pick that file, that license is then uploaded to the uh, the chassis and now if you expand this you can see which package what the version is when the expiration is and whether it's a chassis license or not so if you want to back up your your license file from the chassis you can use the upload command and the upload command will take the .lic file off of the chassis which is where the license file actually resides and it will place it in a archive of your choice so you know of a, of a off-site location um, so when you go to actually install the client software you don't need to worry about licensing um, from the, each individual client because the license actually resolves on the server In addition, if you have a demo license, that demo license will give show you an expiration date here. Okay, the next step under tools is to come down to equipment information. Equipment information will show you what the current status of the, the test chassis is. So what this will do is we'll, we'll show you status of all of your currently connected chassis. So in this case, I have one chassis connected it is a Spiron Test Center 2000. It is currently up. It's currently in a synchronized state, which means that the timing bus is, is up and working properly. The temperature is normal. Uh, the temperature sensor is uh, all. The power supply status is currently normal. The current firmware is 3.427. This will show me the controller version number black backplane version and serial number. Just a hint, uh, if you need to call into tech support they will ask you for a serial number and this is how you actually get the serial number 
uh, without actually physically being next to the chassis. So at this point, one, I have one action available. I can reboot the entire chassis. And this will, will reboot all cards, will kick all users off, um, all port groups. The next level down is the test module. So what this will do is it'll show me which test module uh, is in which slot, in this case slot number one. It's currently up. It's currently in sync, which means it's ready for, for performing testing. And the current uh, group size is one. Now, if you have a hypermetrics or greater level card, you can turn on per port reservation. And the way you do that is you come to resize port group. And that will then uh, allow you to type in a number for how many ports per port group. Uh, by default, it's two on our uh, one gig. Uh, and uh, you can set that to one. OK, this will tell you the card model number, the model description, firmware on the module, the hardware version, and then the serial number for the module. So from here, I could reboot the entire module as well. If I then go over to the individual port group, right, and the definition of a port group was decided here using this resize port group, you'll see each one of the port groups and whether they're in sync, the version, uh, whether the port group status is up or down or rebooting. And again, I could reboot, reboot the individual port group. I can then come over to the time sync and see the time sync topology tree. So what this will do is it'll show me that all of my cards and ports and chassis are in synchronization. This is very important if you're spanning multiple test uh, chassis, whether they're physically located or geographically dispersed using GPS or CDMA. Uh, because if they're not in sync, you will not be able to test properly. So this is where you check that. Finally, under diagnostics, you can see what the current temperature is for each one of the sensors in the system in centigrade. There's currently no power supply warnings and the front fan is currently off because there's no heat necessary for to keep it on. So this is the equipment view uh, tab. The final action is firmware management. So there's three options. You can activate a test package. This is where you move the, the role of the port group uh, from testing like layer two through seven, testing layer one, testing specifically layer four through seven. And when you do this, uh, you pick the individual port. It'll show you the current active test package. And now you can choose which package you want to move it to. Or you can set all of the, the selected port groups here to a specific package for doing bulk updates. So this isn't actually writing any files to the, the management. It's just switching files, uh, sending actually on the, the modules themselves. The install directory is when you want to actually upgrade the firmware to a new version of firmware. So what you do is you go to support.spirancom.com, log in, download the current uh, firmware, which will be in a .tgz file. Very important, do not expand the .tgz file. Keep it as a compressed format and then you browse to that specific format. So for example here, I've got firmware currently selected. So now I can select this and I can hit the install button. And this process can take up to 30 minutes depending upon what modules and configurations you have in the system. Um, and what will happen is, is the system will upgrade the firmware and then reboot the system. One key note about firmware, firmware is matched to the version of GUI or API that you have. So make sure that everything it matches within the system. So this is uh, how to administer a Spire and Test Center chassis.